What's up guys, how you all doing? Now, a few days ago, I did a video and I called it, what is NAS and where would you use it and all that kind of stuff. And I was walking through with you guys some of the stuff that's important to know about network attached storage. Now, in that video, I also said to you that I was gonna start doing some more episodes in this kind of series, uh, leading more into the kind of enterprise type computing, as obviously that's where all my experience is. I've been implementing large uh, uh, business networks for 20 years going right back to mainframe days, all the way up to now using virtualization, cloud computing, virtual desktop, all that kind of stuff. And I get asked so many questions on it. So I'm gonna integrate that into these series, series, into this series. And if you guys have got more questions uh, that you'd like me to answer, then leave them down below. And if it's a kind of big enough question or something that's got enough interest, then I'll go through that uh, as much as I possibly can. Now, I've already got quite a few ideas coming up I'm going to talk to you guys about virtualization in this video today specifically. Then I'm going to start talking to you about virtual desktop uh, and then I'm going to start talking to you about SAN as well. We're going to talk about storage attached network and iSCSI and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's not going to be something that's like once a week or once every three days or anything like that. I'm just going to chuck them out there uh, as and when I can. But today's one is all about virtualization. Uh, and in fact, before I start, if you guys are keen on this series and you want to see more, please do go ahead, hit that like button, and then I know that you're enjoying it. Now, virtualization. And I think the best thing to do with virtualization is kind of just roll it back a few years, quite a few years. You guys can tell that I'm getting gray uh, now, so I've obviously been doing this for a long, long time. Now, if you think back, maybe not even that long, probably about 10 years, something like that, most enterprise solutions, so when we say enterprise, we're talking about business uh, type functionality, so servers sitting in a data center. Now, it doesn't have to be for a multinational company or a company with 10,000 users. This could be for 10 users or 20 users or 50 users or any amount. It kind of all uh, sits around the same sort of idea. So virtualization. Like I say, let's roll it back 10 years. Typically what you used to find in an enterprise is that you would have a server, so a physical piece of tin. Now obviously this is a network attached storage device, but it's also a server as well. Um, this particular one, uh, the QAP, QNAP TS453A, this thing can be used for a web server, a file server, an email server, and in fact a virtualization server, which I'll come back to later. But let's just think of this as any old server. Let's think of this as a 10 year old server sitting in a data center and typically back then it would have one job one job so it would be an email server or it would be a database server or it would be a oracle server or it would be a file server or a um, some kind of user directory server or something like that now let's just think about that for a little while most of those kind of servers that we're talking about there and we're talking about uh, servers in a kind of software world they typically sit there doing not very much at all. Now, email servers and database servers, they can have a high utilization, but things like directory servers, things like file servers, print servers, all of these different kinds of servers, they typically sit there at a very, very low utilization rate. And what that means is you've got loads of these servers all laying around and all of them were sitting there at 10% utilization or 5% utilization or even less than that. Now, Obviously that means that you've got a situation where you're spending more money on hardware than you actually need because if you was to just have a tenth of each one of those servers running, then you would be able to spend a lot less on money on it. But you couldn't necessarily do that because there would be times when they would peak and you needed to be able to deal with those peaks otherwise you get a flat line and that means that users are gonna be waiting for their request to happen. So. What VMware did is they took their workstation-based products, and a lot of people, a lot of you guys will have seen this already, and VMware really are the kind of advocators, if you like, the, the initial company that really came out with an enterprise-based solution. And they said, look, is, when we get this server, instead of just loading Windows Server on it and then putting Exchange or Active Directory or whatever the case may be on the top of it, what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, what we call a bare metal hypervisor. And what that is, is it's a very, very small Linux kernel that sits directly on the hardware that uses very, very little utilization of the machine itself, if nothing, a tiny bit of space, a tiny bit of memory, and a tiny bit of CPU. And then from there, we're gonna break that down into multiple segments, and we're gonna allow different operating systems to live within that one single hypervisor. 
So think of it like this, okay? Now obviously again, this is a NAS box, so this is not, um, you know, technically correct, but it gives you a good example. So think of the overall box itself as the hypervisor, and then think of each one of these drive bays here, of which there's four, as virtual machines, okay? So the hypervisor goes on the bare metal tin itself, and then inside that we've got four virtual machines which are running. Now, going back to my kind of original point, if you've got multiple machines that are only using a very small amount of utilization most of the time, but occasionally peak, if we put four machines on this box, then we've got 10%, 20%, 30%, 40% utilization, but all of them have got a whole bunch of space to peak uh, if they should need to. And instead of buying four machines that use four amounts of electricity, four amounts of support, four amounts of operating systems, etc., 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 we can just have that one machine and what it means is that we get a much higher density of users on a single piece of tin, as we like to call it, or server hardware, for example. So that is really where server virtualization came from, and it's moved right the way forward now. We'll come on to this when I start talking to you guys about VMware, um, vSphere, and ESXi, and all these other different kinds of things, where they, they can really do some phenomenal things when you start having multiple pieces of hardware, moving servers in between, having shared storage, so you don't even have to turn them off when you're moving them, all of that kind of stuff to come. But this video really was just an introduction as to what virtualization is, why people would look at it in the enterprise specifically. And in fact, if you apply that to your house, let's say for example, you wanna look into all this sort of software and servers and all this kind of stuff. You don't wanna have loads and loads of racks sitting in your house of servers and noise and, and electricity and all that. You wanna have one little piece of, of hardware, for example, something like this, which can actually do virtualization. Um, and then you wanna just virtualize your machines on it and you can build a whole test environment into that one box rather than having to have dozens and dozens one physical piece of hardware for each operating system. Now, in terms of doing this an easy way without having to go out and purchase a server operating, uh, sorry, a server piece of hardware and going out and getting VMware and ESX and all this kind of stuff, you can actually do that uh, virtualization on a QNAP. Um, these boxes, most of them support virtualization server, and what that enables you to do is have something like this and do exactly what I said, which is have multiple operating systems all running on that one device at the same time. So if you guys are interested in kind of enterprise computing and you want to try out server 2012 R2 or 2008 R2 or whatever the case may be, you can get yourself one of these NAS devices at a very, very good price. You can go away, you can put um, multiple operating systems on it and you can try all this stuff out. Build yourself a domain, build yourself an email server, a database server, connect them all up. You know, all that kind of stuff, that's how you're gonna learn about all of these different technologies. If it's something that you're interested in doing, uh, later on in life or even uh, now you know maybe you fancy a career change or maybe you're working towards that maybe you'll come some kind of support uh, engineer or something like that so anyway guys I hope that made sense to you I feel like I've really kind of waffled on quite considerably in that video but like I say if you enjoyed it please do go ahead and hit that like button for me I would really really appreciate it and it would make you a very very cool cat indeed hope you have a great evening uh, if you want more videos like this let me know and I will see you all in the next one See ya.